Hey everybody, Pastor Steve here. Thankful you've joined me for today's devotion and our Bible reading plan. We're in the eighth chapter of John's Gospel. And I want to talk about verses 31 and 32 today. So I hope you've already read this chapter and written in your journal what God has said uh, to you. But uh, these are the verses that spoke to me and I want to speak about. Verse 31. So Jesus was saying to those Jews who had believed in him. So he's speaking to Jewish citizens, residents who believed in him. And then he said to them this in verse 31, if you continue in my word or my teaching, then you are truly disciples of mine and you will know the truth and the truth will make you free. Now I want us to focus for a few moments on the latter part of verse 31. He's talking to Jewish people who were believing in him. And he says to them, if you continue in my word, then you are truly disciples of mine. The NIV basically says, if you hold to my truth, to my teaching, to my word, then you are really my disciples. The New King James Version says, if you abide in my teaching and so on, you are my disciples indeed. Now, I want you to notice the grammar, the tense. He says, if, and he's talking to people who are believers, if you continue, remain, continue um, in my word, in my teaching, if you continue obeying my truth, my teaching, then he says, you are truly, really my disciples. In other words, the proof is in the pudding, so to speak, that continuing faithfulness and continuing obedience is evidence of salvation because there are so many people who say they believe in Jesus and fall by the wayside and never live for him. Now, the question comes to the mind of many Baptists and others, what about once saved, always saved, or eternal security of the believer? Yes, I believe the Bible teaches that if someone is truly saved, they are always saved. I believe the Bible teaches the eternal security of those who are saved, of those who are believers. But the Bible does not teach you can pray some prayer, oh, I believe in Jesus and get saved, and then live any way you want for the rest of your life. That's, that's unbiblical. And yet, that's kind of become unofficial belief, kind of a unspoken belief of a lot of people in church day. Yeah, somebody prayed a prayer when they were 10 years old, and it's been 40 years, and they haven't lived for Jesus since, but they prayed that prayer back then, so there's no, no, no. If someone's really saved, yes, they're saved forever. It is eternal security. But Jesus very clearly says, if And he's talking to believers. If you continue in my truth, the idea is that if you obey. The word continue there that's translated hold to in the NIV or abide in in the New King James means to continue in something, to dwell in something, to live in it, to remain in it, to endure, to last, to stick. Now, does that mean someone, if someone backslides for a season, they're lost? No. No. You can do that, but you're going to repent and come back to Jesus and live for him. But somebody who says, you know, they got saved, but it's been 20 years. I I, I don't know what the exact timeline is, but if someone spends decades not living for Jesus, they're not saved. They never were really saved. Because how we live, our obedience and faithfulness to the truth of Jesus is the evidence of a genuine conversion. That's clearly what Jesus says here. Why do we ignore that? Um, John, who wrote the Gospel of John, said more about it over in his book of 1 John, if you'll go ahead and turn in your Bible there real quickly. In 1 John chapter 2, starting at verse 3. But this we know, that we have come to know him, come to know Jesus, if we keep, if we continue keeping his commandments. The one who says, I have come to know him and does not keep his commandments is a liar. And the truth is not in him. How much clearer does it have to be before we pay attention to what scripture actually says? 
Verse 5, but whoever keeps his word, Jesus' word, in him, the love of God has truly been perfected. By this, we know that we are in him. It's not that enduring and staying faithful saves us. It's that enduring and staying faithful is the evidence of a real salvation experience. Later in chapter 2 of 1 John, verses 18 and 19, he says, Children, it is the last hour. What the Bible teaches elsewhere, that the last days is the entire time period between the two comings of, of, of Jesus Christ. And then drop down to verse 19, talking about some who abandoned the faith. He says in verse 19, they went out from us, but they were not really of us. For if they had been of us, they would have remained with us. But they went out so that it would be shown that they all are not of us. Pretty clear again. One more passage in 1 John chapter 5. He talks about the sin that leads to death. So I don't have time to go into all the detail, but the basic teaching is if someone is truly saved, they are saved forever. Eternal security, once saved, always saved. Absolutely. But if they are truly saved, they're going to live for Jesus. Now, can they backslide for a season? Yes. But the biblical teaching is if they backslide for a season, one of two things will happen. They either are going to come, repent of that sin and come back and become faithful to Jesus, or they will die. That's it. That's the only two options for someone who's really been saved. They either repent of their sin and get back faithful to God, or God takes them out, takes them home to heaven so that they don't continue damaging the witness of the gospel. But if someone prayed a prayer to receive Jesus Christ and then they they spend years and years and decades not living for Jesus, I don't care what prayer they prayed or, how, or who baptized them, they are lost because they were never really saved. Don't you remember the parable of the sower Jesus told in the gospels? The seed fall, falls on all the, you know, the sower goes out to sow seed, the Christian goes out and witnesses, preaches, shares the gospel and the seed, the word of God, the truth of God falls in all kinds of soil, all kinds of dirt and some of them spring up quickly but they don't have roots, they don't have depth and the sun withers they're not fruitful, it's not real and uh, uh, it seems like at funerals sometimes everybody's preached into heaven because 40 years ago he prayed that prayer and got baptized but hadn't been in church in a coon's age. Hasn't been living for Jesus. That makes a mockery of the gospel, of the cross, and of salvation and tramples the blood of Jesus under our feet. Once saved, always saved? Absolutely. But sooner or later, somebody who's really saved is going to show it by how they live. That's what Jesus said. That's what the New Testament says. And so we need, we need to be praying really hard for a lot of people who haven't been living for Jesus for a long, long, long time. And we think because when they were a little kid, they prayed some prayer, they're okay. Um, only God knows for sure who individually is saved, but I'm, I'm, you know, the Bible's pretty clear on this subject, and we had better pay attention to it. That's the word for today. I'll see you tomorrow with uh, uh, maybe for some of you a more encouraging word. God bless you.